So today we're talking about rest and what it means in the Christian life to rest in Jesus, but also just like an actual, you know, normal life, what the, what rest looks like. And so, Corey, you just came back recently yes. from a awesome trip. Tell me about your trip. Uh, me and Chrissy and CJ went to Anna Maria Island for a week, which is like south of Tampa. And it's, I like it because it's super boring. There's like yeah. no high rise hotels and it's like a single lane highway and like people just have golf carts everywhere. We did not have a golf cart cause we have a toddler and you're not just, 90. I don't know. I want one. I want to be you see people. Wanna, yeah, it's wanna. like the gas powered good ones. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was great for that week. Um, just, uh, cooking food together and hanging out with Chrissy and CJ going to the beach, going to the pool. And he napped really well the whole time. So yeah. a little three hours every day where we could nap or do whatever we wanted. And so how have you noticed vacations changing since you had CJ? Well, last year we did the same thing and he was only like seven months old or eight months old. So he like could only crawl yeah. and thought he wanted to eat sand. Mm. So uh, way different because now he could yeah. like hold my hand and walk to the beach and right. he would help me pull or push the like beach wagon we brought, which yeah. he thought he was doing so much. Of the world. <laughs> I know. Um, so it's different and it just, yeah, in a whole year it changes because he changed a lot. And then Chrissy and I, like we stayed in like the exact same place that we found on Airbnb. So we mm. like knew yeah. like the first year was like the scouting year. Right. And now we're like, okay, we know no, we need to buy going. groceries for a whole week. We're, uh, we told ourselves we're only going out to eat like once a day just because it's so much work to get all of us yeah. off the beach and there. And so it was, uh, it's different. It just takes different communication. We were like, Chrissy and I both took turns, like giving the other person like the afternoon or the morning and mm-hmm. just say like, Hey, go have, yeah, this year go have relax. three hours, yeah. go do whatever you want. And so we did that and it was helpful. Yeah. I remember our first vacation, we went on with Clive when he was like two and a half. He'd like, you know, walking, everything like that. And this family from uh, from a church had said they have a beachfront place for free for people who are pastors. Um, and so I was like, oh, dude, that's awesome. Let's mm-hmm. go. It was amazing. Um, so we get there, gorgeous place. And I, I walk up to them like, you know I have a two-year-old, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's not a problem. And within the first, like, three hours, Clive is, like, breaking stuff. And, and like, it was a disaster. And so that night, we go to them and we say, we're so thankful that you let us stay here. But we're going to go home because our kid is breaking everything and keeps getting hurt. It was just, like, it was it was made for adults adults, yeah. <laughs> and not two-year-olds. And so yeah. it was just really, uh, yeah. really frustrating. Two-year-old boys are just figuring out I know. how... How well is this held together? Yeah. So, what was the, what was the most restful part of your trip? Um, few like I mean, just re- we we both read a lot. Yeah. Um, which reading is good. It's like a active unplugging from technology because like when you're in a book, like it it help. It's really hard to like pick up your phone when you're like in a book. So unless you read from your phone, like me. I know you. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> I do not know. Um, but no, um, that and just, you know, cooking dinner together and yeah. hanging out and Christy and I would play cards at night and, you know, just, it was restful to not have a plan. Like we planned her birthday happened yeah. on vacation. So, you know, she picked where she wanted to go eat and what we would yeah. do that day. But other than that, it was kind of waking up and being like, what do we want to do? Right. Now the Cooper family is famous for staycations. Do you find it more restful going out than staycationing? Um, I still feel like Anna Marie Island's a staycation. It's only like two hours. That's that's far. Yeah, it's enough. For away. a homebody who doesn't like to leave the house at all? Yeah. Two hours. I grew up, we always grew up doing staycations. Like when I was a kid, my dad uh, owned his own business. So like it was more so like he came on vacation like sometimes, uh-huh. like stayed with us at night, but still had to like run stuff. So yeah. we always stayed like around around the Disney area. Yeah. So it was... I didn't know we were famous for staycations. Well, to me, you are. Okay. You're famous to one guy for staycations. So uh, how are you feeling now that you're back? I'm good. Um, So it was crazy because we we did that week at Anna Maria Island, and then we did a week kind of at home and went to the beach with Chrissy's family for a couple days. Um, It's it's harder to rest at home, but like 
I'm a little homebody ish too. So I enjoy it and it helps me have more of a routine. Yeah. Like I'm a routine person. So like after a little while of not having to wake up at the same (laughs) time, I'm just like, what's happening to (laughs) me? Um, yeah, and then I was back at work for three days, and we got COVID, so we were back. So it was basically like me, Chrissy, and CJ. Yeah, and for four weeks. So yeah, it was COVID it was wonderful and COVID has challenging. Ripped, ripped through life once again. It has, but we're beating it. Who cares? Yeah, we are. Who cares about that? Yeah. Thing? So vacation is one of the best things in the world, especially when you're a little kid. I remember being a little kid and and going on vacation. For us, the biggest memory that I have. A vacation is we would get in this huge as an astro van or something like that. Oh yeah, those big big boys. It has like the captain seats and everything. And we would get in there before the minivan. That was just it was the before, regular right. it was size a straight van. up. Yeah, we're van. rolling the country van, yeah. and we would drive from here to Ohio because my family's up in Ohio. And that sounds horrible. <clears throat> it was just it was terrible. First off, no offense to Ohio, but Ohio is like the worst place in the world. Because <laughs> uh, when you come from Florida, like why would it you is ever? state fifty out of fifty? Yeah, so. Yeah, 50 out of 50 for sure. So we would get in this van, and the cool thing was, in our van there was a TV in the center. It's like a center console on, oh, yeah. the, on the ceiling. So there's this old TV that you know was like four feet deep, like mm-hmm. this big puppy. Four-inch screen. Yeah, four-inch screen, exactly. And so, but my, my dad figured out how to connect a Nintendo to it, like a SNES. And so we would, my favorite memories were, were getting to go on those trips, and for like the first hour... I was stoked. Man, we get to play video games. We get to watch TV. This is incredible. And by like hour six, you're like, why Why did we leave our house? Yeah. That Our house is amazing. Yes. So it was fun once you get there. But but so for me and my sister, I remember we would get in fights over that TV. Mm-hmm. One time we got in a fight big enough that I kicked the TV in at the house, though. Oh, And okay. got in a lot of trouble. I was like, it. if you kicked the TV <laughs> at the top amazing, of right? a van. No. Agile boy. No, agile. Yeah. So we'll tell that story sometime later. But. Um, I remember how fun it was playing video games in that playing Mario Kart when you're in a car Mm -hmm. is amazing and makes you feel like you're going to throw up. It's very disorienting. So for me, I feel like that's my kind of favorite memory is traveling, doing that. We didn't like, we didn't stop places. If we were going somewhere for vacation, we got there. There was no like, no like multi-day trips. It was like, we're driving through the night. My dad, I remember would have to stop and he would tell me, he's like, I'm going to fall asleep at the wheel. (laughs) <laughs> so I need to get coffee. <laughs> and like, if you know my dad, there's no telling if he's tired or not. He's just always very yeah. even keel, very relaxed. And so I was like, dad, you look the same. Are you always about to sleep at the wheel? Yes. Uh, and We're always alert. Yeah. <laughs> don't need sleep. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so that was, that was fun. So what about, what's your favorite memory as a kid growing up? Similarly, I remember when, you know, when my sister was little that we have, there's, I have two younger siblings, but like when we were younger, we had like a TV similar like it was like a one by one cube and with like a four inch screen that was a vhs like tv and she would always want to watch barney when she was like two so like the famous phrase was like how many barneys until we get there there. (laughs) so i'm like at this point i'm like like nine years old Uh so like i'm like i'm barney i mean i'm past the point cameron and chloe enjoyed it did you know barney wiggles when he talks there's not a single scene where Barney's not wiggling away. He's like, hey, hey, kid. It's just a little known fact about Barney that I've learned. Yeah. That and I remember uh, we we did a road trip since, you know, mm-hmm. this is before the staycations apparently. Ooh, I can tell my, the story. My parents rented a trip or rented a like uh, like an SUV, like a, like a Chevy Blazer or something back in the day. I was in like second grade and Cameron was very young. Um, but we drove all the way to Washington, D.C., but we stopped along the way. Okay. None of that Smart. nonsense. Smart. Like we went to, stayed in places and went to Atlanta. That's why I'm an Atlanta Braves fan, sidebar. Hey. This is way off topic. I'm but like we were too. in we were in Atlanta eating at a Cracker Barrel when they won the World Series in 1995. So I was like, That's awesome. this is too magical to not be a Braves yeah. fan. You got to be. I am because my family's from Atlanta. So that's like. And not- it was before the Rays existed. So like yeah. there was no team close. So. Um, driving there, just hanging out in the back. And I remember, like, I remember that vividly from being seven years old, like more than any hmm. other trip in my life. And it's, That's cool. it's, yeah. Cameron got really sick. So me and my dad <laughs> got foot long hot dogs in front of the Smithsonian Ooh. and looked at dinosaurs and, you know, it was fun. Was Cameron eating foot long hot dogs while sick? No, he was, him and my mom were just at home or in a hotel uh-huh. and he was just real sick. Poor childish Cambino. I know. I know. So. I have one more story to tell real quick, and we we might cut this out. Don't know. So one more story that we have. 
Corey and I played in a band. We, I'm going to tell them because you know we played in a band. We traveled in a we band. Did. It was very fun. Fun season of life. I miss it a lot. But <clears throat> one time we were out on a trip and we borrowed Dustin's trailer from Avalon. He was Church at Avalon back Church in back in the day. And so we borrowed his trailer. And this is one of our first trips. Everybody made fun of me because I was going through my house like, what do I need? You know, we were gone for like a month at that point. So I was like, was it a month? Something like that? It was, a couple yeah, weeks. It might have been. So we were out like touring-ish, kind of like playing at different places. Drove um, to Colorado to hang out. Essentially. Yeah. Uh, so the guy, I was looking through my house like, what do I need to take? I don't, I've never done this before. What, I don't know what to take on a, a mini tour kind of thing. And I grabbed bolt cutters. I was like, bolt cutters, I don't know why I need them, but like you might need bolt cutters at some point on a trip this long. And so I get, we get there, I open up the trailer, throw them in, and, and everybody's making fun of me because I brought bolt cutters. We're mostly just asking, what were you thinking? Like, why? I don't know. We don't even have like a lock. <laughs> like, just, we had the lock that you can't just, even use bolt cutters on. Right. I just grabbed them. And so we throw them in the trunk, and people, they made fun of me, whatever. On the way home from this trip, we're driving at like 3 a.m., and it's pitch black out. And I hit a cone that was in my defense the cone was in the road whatever it was middle of the night i was very tired we were like an hour and a half from the house and when i hit this cone the wheel well flew off of the trailer flew backwards so it was hauled on by one screw flew, flew backwards and all i see behind us are these showers of sparks it was terrifying i was like oh my gosh this i lit the trailer on fire so we pull over yes you did i well i didn't light it on fire I just sparked it like crazy uh so we pull over and i get the bolt cutters out and i cut that so i'm like I'm, I'm first off let me get there I, i'm thinking about like what what am i gonna do all the guys are asleep in the back of the van i've got to figure this out and it sparked in my mind i brought bolt cutters so i went i cut the metal out we were we were off the road for like maybe three minutes because of those bolt cutters and it would have been so much longer and so long story short we ruined dustin's trailer and we're very sorry, <laughs> but the Lord's providence yeah, of having bolt, you bring uh, bolt, bolt cutters work. Bolt cutters work. So uh, vacations, vacations are great. Um, yeah, and the purpose of us talking even about vacation is to talk about rest. Like it's always good to get away. Everybody knows that it's summertime now. People are attendance at churches drops <laughs> just a little bit. As it does. And uh, I mean, we went on vacation too, and Dustin's been on vacation. Like it's it, it's important to get away and rest change of scenery um but it, oftentimes we can miss the point of why we yeah. need it and it's it's that realization that it's found in scripture and in who we are as being made in the image of god like we need to rest and so to start so, that whole thing yeah before we get in there can you explain what it means to be made in the image of god yeah like we are yeah the imago day we are made in the image of god we are uh he like we have the same characteristics. Same characteristics, same, um, you know, it's that blueprint. Like he's not yeah. a human being, but like we're still made in his image, which still hurts my brain. To yeah, think like about. we have like, the same affections, like yeah. in our in the most purified sense, we have the same affections as God. We have the same, some of the same needs as God. Um, as in, that's not, it's not good to say God is needy, but yeah. God is, in his character, is relational. In his character, he... Um, is creative by design. Mm-hmm. He he's a maker, and yeah, so he works. Yeah, he, he yeah. works. Right. So, like as human beings, we exude because God has designed it into our DNA. We exude so much of the character of God. We're we're just yeah. like little mirrors. So, you know, yeah. we're, we're little reflectors of of how God is. And it's not you know some Mormons might take it way further and say you are a little God and you will be a God someday yourself. But for Christians. Um, Mm-mm. That's not how it is. <laughs> it's, it's so being made in the image of God is important to understand because the more that we live out that image of God, the more, the more just at rest we will be. And yes. especially today as we're talking about rest. Yeah. And so yeah. if you want to get into that scripture and kind of, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm, I'm so no, rude. <laughs> it's not rude. Um, yeah. And we see it in, in Genesis chapter two, like uh, God spends six days creating everything that we know that was created. Um, and then he rested on the seventh day, which doesn't, doesn't make sense. Like right. God doesn't get tired. Like yeah. he's, all powerful and supernaturally powerful more than we can even know and all knowing, which means his brain doesn't even get tired. Like right. He, his capacity for things doesn't even make sense to us, but, uh, but he rested. And I think the main reason he did that was to teach us, like, I need this to sit and, um, yeah, it's, it's just amazing that God does that. And, uh, he did it at the end, but it's also 
we need rest for, you know, the next six days. Yeah. Like the, and so, yeah. One of the things, what more do you think about why God rested? Yeah. Well, so I think clearly it was a example for us to follow. Um, what I find the most interesting about rest is that there's rules like in scripture, there's rules that you have to rest. It's not like God just set the example, yeah. like set the example, but he knew we were created in his image and we would want to work and we would want to, you know, continue to, to move yeah. and to continue to, you know, get things done. And yet we are limited. He is not. Yes. So he didn't, he didn't rest because he's limited, but we need rest because we're limited. And it, and because he knew that we are limited and that we are built in the image we want to create, he set up like rules in the Old Testament for rest. And so yeah. f- what's so funny to me is it's not just like, it's, we are so quick to burn ourselves out. Yeah. We burn the candle at both ends. We Or quick know, to be lazy. Or quick to be lazy, yeah. which is like equally, if, if you've ever been lazy, <laughs> I have, uh, it, it's equally exhausting because you're oh, worried man. that you didn't get the, the right things done or you're worried yeah. that, you know, so... You're not filled with the joy of being created in the image of God. You are not created <laughs> right, to right. be slothful. Right. You're not created to be overworking. You're not created yeah. to be slothful. And so what we need to do as, as people is have good rhythms of work and good rhythms of rest. And I think mm-hmm. uh, it's just so important that we connect the fact that work was pre-fall, right? Work, Genesis 2 has yeah. happened. Is We're reading this from Genesis 3 happens and the fall happens. Work was good, it was fulfilling, it was wholesome, and then the mm-hmm. fall happens, and that's when the thorns, you yeah. know, happen. That's where work kind of gets more tiresome and worse. less... Yeah, much, much worse. It's always a toil. Um, and so the when we, as people, decide not to rest, we're just essentially saying, like, God, you... I know you're the creator of the universe, I know you know all things, but I've got a better way. Mm-hmm. How do you keep yourself from overworking and staying restful or like having a regular rhythm of rest? Um, I try to do that. I mean, most of us on staff take Fridays off just cause, um, you know, Sunday is a work day when you're in ministry. So, um, Fridays are the day where I try to not do anything. And even like around the house, like Saturday is the day for, you know, all those things like getting stuff done and running errands and sometimes those switch and sometimes it's, you know, Saturdays, the, it just depends. Like things come up. So it's always like family communication, but Chrissy knows like, and CJ doesn't know, he just knows I'm home on Friday. (laughs) Like and we hang out. Um, so that's where, you know, it keeps me accountable and realizing like I need it. Um, and yeah, there are kind of rules for resting or things I try not to do and things I try to do on those restful days. But it is a, I know I need it because I need to actively tell myself I am a human being, right? Like not a human doing and like Sabbath. I I believe God put it into place in the old Testament because it is like, it is reminding us as human beings that we're not in control and that if we stop, like the world still spins because God's still holding it. Right. Like, and that's, that's why it's good because it is forcing yourself. You're declaring. Yeah. I'm limited. By, yeah. yeah. You're declaring <laughs> by saying, I'm not going to work today. Those things like God is in control yeah. and I am not. And realizing like we need to be filled like Sabbath day is about you know yeah. worship. A lot of people like Sunday, if that's your, you know, if you work a normal amount of time, like Sunday is, you know, our Sabbath day of, of worship and being filled by the word of God and being with one another. And uh, cause we're relational, like people, even who are introverts, like you, we need it. Right. People lean on that so much. Like (laughs) it is, you do not, you need people. You are, we are all created in the image of God. It didn't say God created these and God created these. And, um, so rest is just, it's that declaration and, uh, and it's hard. It takes practice a lot. I'm not good at it. Yeah. Same here. I, so like we have Fridays off. That's typically the day I work on videos for like my YouTube stuff. And then Saturday I have the kids with me. And when you have young kids, as much as it's wonderful, yeah, it is. it's not always restful. Yes. And so I need to be careful that there are... Like the couch is not an option. <laughs> right. And if I do sit down on the couch, yep. I'm frustrating someone in my house at some point. So um, yeah, I think it's so important. Now I don't, I don't ascribe in some... And you can... 
I don't ascribe to the notion that Sabbath day has to be mm-hmm. one single day or one single time. Um, I do think that Jesus is our Sabbath rest. However, it's really smart and probably works best. If you look throughout history, it's, it's intended, you know, that people have that longer, you know, longer form rest. Yeah. And it's, um, I've seen in my own life from, you know, reading things and seeing other pastors who've written books about Sabbath and how they do it. Like I remember making it way too rigid. Um, and it became like not restful so much like, you know, some people do the, you know, sundown, um, 24 hours, like, you know, on Thursday, Thursday night when the sun goes down till the sun goes down on Friday is Sabbath day. And you're not like, don't do anything. Like, and I've found like that stole the joy from it. Like Mm -hmm. even, especially, you know, the Sabbath was set up that way in the old Testament and, and God did it on purpose for the children of Israel and saying like, and you're all going to do it together. Right. It's way different when you have a million people doing the Sabbath at the same okay, time. Okay, so the, I just read in 4,000 Weeks, great book, 4,000 Weeks, he talks about that. How, uh, was it Soviet Soviet Russia tried to set up a pattern where there was work seven days a week yeah. where only certain part of the, the country got this day, these days off, and these days uh-huh. off. And people hated it because it wasn't just resting and doing nothing. It was resting and doing nothing and being around the people that you love. And if you're not... yeah. If you're not doing that, it's not the same rest, which goes back to what you're talking about. We are created in the image of God, and yeah. we need both that personal rest and we need communal rest. Yeah. Sorry that that's I cut what, you off once No, again. that's why sometimes I don't like, you know, 99% of America works Monday through Friday. And then and we like, have Friday. And we're <laughs> off on Friday. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of like yeah, y- you don't really believe you're off because you know a lot of people are still getting after it. Right. So like, I don't really believe like I'm allowed to do nothing sometimes. Huh. That might be why I chose to do all my YouTube stuff then, just because it's I like probably oh, should it's just. Still... But then Saturday we have you know ministry stuff that happens on campus, yeah. and you know that's you know whenever we invite you know our church members to be a part of something, it's usually on Saturday because that's their day off. So yeah, um, yeah. Where were we at? Oh, I don't know. No, talking about the Old Testament, but in the new in the New Testament, we see from the example of Jesus, like even his rhythms of getting away and praying and being with the Father were different every single day, right? As well as resting, like it wasn't the same day every week. It would like because right. I mean we see Jesus and them picking food and healing people on the Sabbath day, and yeah, like he still went and you know taught and went to the synagogue on Sabbath day, but like his like actual like I need to take a nap. Going up like, the mountains, it happened. <laughs> yeah. It happened on at a, a boat, different time. A storm. Like for three years, it was sporadic. Yeah. But he did it, right? And Jesus needed to do it, right? Who do we think we are? But also, like on the other side of it, it's very. Uh, we have to be careful about being slothful, because like Jesus worked. Yeah. Like my man was, like on all the time. Yeah. Even to the point where he was, he allowed his rest and filling up, um, being with the father and then sitting in prayer and being quiet. Like he allowed that to get interrupted right? because that was what God had for him in that moment. Um, so yeah, I feel like we got to be careful. Like, yeah, there's pitfalls on both sides, Yeah, you know? but it is like, it's even in America, like we, we think you work five and you take two off. Right. That's not in the Bible though. Yeah. Now yeah. I do, I listened to Piper one time talk about that and he's like, well, that other day is my Taking care of my house, doing yes. my yard. It's like work. All that kind of stuff. It's just right. not like what, you know, it is, yes. <clears throat> it is getting things done and caring for your home and all that stuff. As so we talked about yearly vacations and, and what that looks like in your, your season of rest. And we talked about not being slothful. I think one of the ways, so I want to talk about yearly rest, weekly rest, and daily rest. But yeah. for yearly rest, one of the ways that I know that I've earned my yearly rest, and, and I don't like to put it in the, in the terms of I've earned this, but like that I, that I should rest and, mm-hmm. and it's right and good and, and holy is that I set yearly goals for myself. Mm. And I make sure that like, I, I have clarity. I've prayed about it. Um, typically I do that through December where I'm praying and asking the Lord for clarity on, on the next year of what he wants me to accomplish and get mm-hmm. done. And knowing full well that if I don't accomplish it, like we said, God is the creator and sustainer of the universe. I'm not, but when I set goals, it helps me it helps me more easily rest knowing that I don't have to do everything. You know, when we have, when we don't have goals for the year or for, you know, yeah. certain times of life, we get aimless and we, we don't accomplish 
the right things and so we just accomplish a bunch of things and yeah. it that's not helpful either mm-hmm. and that's that's actually more like restless exhausting work when you're not focused and in getting accurate have you noticed yourself and i know you're extremely goal oriented have you noticed having those goals giving yourself more permission to rest you know say once a year on vacation or even if it's just daily kind of life yeah like on on all of it more so like I don't feel bad. I I guess the the annual one is always harder because it's, you just know, and like, especially working at uh, OBC, like, um, Dustin was the one who told me like, I need to take two weeks off in a row. Rest until you want to be back. Because I was like, he had to tell me like, Corey, you need to do that. Yeah. Because you're like, you know, a week is good, but he's, he, and the way he even models it is like, I want you to want to be back. Right wait like rested ready to go because ministry is ministry is people like if 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 it becomes a grind like you gotta yeah you need you to get snappy you, frustrated you yeah. need the lord to work on you and yeah. give you rest um but yeah especially yeah weekly and, and daily like i have those things that are goals of mine that are in priority that i kind of tell myself if you get this done then you can do this and then like um so that i can yeah, like there's like yesterday was a really good day mm. because I like sat down, put CJ to bed at like eight o'clock, and when I like sat down, I was like, I got my what, stuff. Done. Like what a good day. Yeah. Like it's it's that pride of working hard. Yeah. And doing the right things. Right. Like which it's focused. is yeah, super you, hard. You don't yeah. feel like you just ran. You know, you didn't yes. spin your tires in the mud. You yeah. got stuff done. I finished a book a couple of weeks ago that that my main takeaway was asking yourself the question like. Like, are you being effective? Yeah. What book was it? It was called The Effective Executive Oof, by Peter Drucker. It's like ter- 50 years terribly old. Terribly boring. No, it <laughs> was really good. And he's a, he's like Austrian. So he has a cool voice. The Druck. Yeah. It was, but like the whole thing is like, we can work really hard, but we always have to ask ourselves like, are, was it effective? Yeah. Especially in ministry, like you can do things, but like our disciples being made. Right. Have you helped? Right. Did you help somebody see the glory of God today? Like, yeah, yeah. I think there's a, there's a difference between getting things done and being productive. Yes. Being productive is getting the right things done. So, can I talk about my favorite book in the whole world? Yeah. Okay, I brought it in here, so I'm gonna show it to you. <clears throat> Get uh-huh. ready for this. It is. It's called What What's Best Next by Matt Perman. I had to read this in school, like when I was my last semester at Liberty. It's so to, funny when school books actually help and are so actually good. This is the last book I read in school. The last, like after like three and a half years of, uh-huh. of getting my master's, um, I had to read this while I did my internship. And I was like, I'm doing an internship. How dare you make me read? Right. But this book is like, like I've read it like three times, but it's really, it, the subtitle is like how the gospel transforms the way you get things done. Yeah. And the whole premise is like, is this glorifying God? Is this what God wants me to do? And asking yourself that every day, every right. week, every month, and just really letting the gospel orient everything. And even getting down to the point of making yourself a mission statement for your life. And, and the cool part about it, he says, is y- your mission statement, like even if you get fired from your job, even if like your world falls apart, mission you can still accomplish. Yeah. It is. And that is, you know, the I forget what old church father said it, and then Piper rephrased it as the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy Him forever. And Piper says, "Glorify God by I enjoying Him." Him. Um, just that that sovereign joy that we get. Um, but this, I always ask myself questions and practices from this because it it really knowing it's good to celebrate, look back at a week, and be like, "Okay, that, that, and that." Yes, like that was. I feel like spirit led god wanted me to do it like it was effective and then you can be like well that now you know next week like do that last yeah do that at thursday afternoon before i like right, am done right. and all of As, that helps us to actively rest well mm-hmm. because if, if you if you didn't do the right things you're spending that resting time thinking about man i really wish i would have yeah. used this time more effectively and so i think yeah. that's really helpful so what about so kind of that, that's like a, a philosophy of rest, kind of you you make sure you do the right things so that when it is time to take off, when it is time to, to disconnect, you yeah. can actually disconnect. Um, but what about like your weekly rhythms of rest? What does that look like for your family? 
Um, weekly is that Friday, usually Friday or Saturday, whatever day it is. And that's just kind of, it's a good one because, um, Chrissy's a stay at home mom right now with, with CJ and we're about to have our second baby in like a month. Cray. Woo! Cray. Pray for me. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just a good day cause she knows like I'm home. Yeah. Like, and it's not that no one can get to me. Like I feel like in those seasons of life where I felt really rigid about that, I would like, you know, it's one book said the guy like turns his phone off and puts it in a drawer for a day. Yeah. And that was like, I tried it and I was like, I can't like, (laughs) because like I'm, I'm a pastor and I know I've been called to love and serve and shepherd and, um, and be there for people and like real life happens. And so it's being like, sometimes that's the best thing is saying my family knows like, Hey, I need to go serve somebody or we can go do it together. But that Friday is really just, you know, we'll go do something, go grab donuts and sit outside. Um, just lots of walks, just yeah. things and trying to, I'm not rigid about the unplugging, but I try not to, I try not to, I try to not be on my phone by doing other things, by yeah. reading, um, you know, listening to a podcast or just us just doing nothing and hanging out and, building Legos with CJ and yeah. So that's kind of the, the weekly thing. And even in my work life, I've been better about it, but like usually the last Thursday of every month, I try to be off campus to where I can look back at my calendar Mm -hmm. for that month and ask those questions. Like what should be celebrated? Sure. What should you do? What was effective? What should you not, you know, what should be on the back burner and then plan the next month yeah. Based on that. So it's kind of always, it's really good to check in. I feel like Sabbath yeah. is a good way to check in. That's right. a good time if you're married and you know, your right. Sabbath dinner or date night is like asking, what have I done? Well, what can I, what can I do different? And you might not like the answer. No, but the answer is helpful. Yeah. But it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. The best times in our marriage is when we have those conversations because it keeps you from fighting yeah. daily. Yeah. Because if I know like something bothered me, I can bring it up then. Yeah. And that's I'm, the I'm waiting okay till time, Friday yeah. at dinner. And most of the time, 95% of the time, I don't even bring it up yeah. because it was dumb. Yeah. So, yeah. For sure. What so about if, you for weekly stuff? Yeah. For me, weekly, like I said, we, we have from work, we have off Fridays, but that's the day I choose to work on some online ministry. So and Terry Ann works Friday. And Terry Ann works Friday. So that's like uh, the kids typically, now summer's different because the kids are at school, or they are not at school. Yeah. So Fridays used to be the day I would do that. Now it's just like wild, crazy, try to hold things together until mom gets home. Um, Saturday is our family day. That's like our major. We try to keep that as like mm-hmm. sacred time of this is our family time, not doing a bunch of you know busy stuff. We have park passes to Aquatica and SeaWorld because they were the cheapest ones. Uh, yeah. And so, and there's penguins. And there's penguins. And so it's super hot and you go see the penguins. Uh, so we, we do that on Saturdays typically. And then we also, Sunday afternoon, this is a new thing for us, we go bowling. All right. And it's restful and it's fun and I always hurt my neck and that's not fun. Uh, but I do Your get, neck? Yeah, because I throw the ball too hard. All right. And so it just like throws everything out of alignment. Um, but I get to go to Boardwalk and have great... Boardwalk wings, yeah, and they cause talk about this yesterday. Bad how indigestion. Gross that is. <laughs> Just finger foods at the bowling alley yeah. are not good. I don't care. Um, You're makes touching you, this, makes this you rented rented ball that's thirty years old. Yeah, that they do not clean well. No, they they don't care. So, so we do that as like a weekly rest. Um, and I I I need to be better about not checking my phone. I I, I feel like I go through these rhythms of like phone addiction and then I, yeah. I, I get frustrated with it and so it goes way down and it goes way back up and way down so maybe someday I'll learn but right now I don't know so for me weekly weekly it's kind of spread apart from Saturday to Sunday mm-hmm. and that's good for us because kids are exhausting and so you kind of need two days to and, and after Sunday morning singing or preaching you're tired yeah. and so it's fun to just kind of go need a couple yeah a couple hour nap yeah to be able to do something like that so but daily rhythms of rest for me I I try my absolute best to read my Bible every day. I try to do it in the morning times, um, but uh, our kids are in a season, and it always happens at about three and a half years old. It happened with Clive. It's now happening with Ellie, where they suddenly like realize 
that they're scared. Like the, the room is scary, that the darkness is scary. And so they, Ellie's been coming into our room a lot. And so it makes waking up harder. But what I've done is I've transitioned that to the afternoon. So I'll try to daily spend time mm-hmm. reading my Bible, uh, praying, and I have to stop myself. Like this morning was a bad example. I read and I thought, oh, that's a really great thought. And I thought, I need to share this with mm-hmm. the online ministry stuff. And so I took what should have been like a personal moment with Christ. Yep. And I I thought, oh, this is going to be really great. People are going to be encouraged. And that's not a bad thing. Like people should, it's great to encourage people and all that. But there are certain times where it's like, I'm not a believer for content's sake. I'm a believer because I love Christ. Yeah. So uh, those are, again, you need to be intentional about Sabbath or intentional about rest. I think that time is an intentional time where I need to say, this is not, this is for only for me, not for anybody else. Um, and so then in that time, I, I try to make sure that I spend some time in prayer um, and then just like reminding myself of the truth of God. Because if I walk into a day understanding the truth of God, that he loves me, that he's for me, that he's He's the one who sustains the world, then I don't have a sense of hurry mm-hmm. and like that exhausted, yeah. anxious feeling. And I'm a pretty tightly wound, anxious person. And so it's, it's really helpful for me. So um, yeah, and then just like making sure like that that book there's a great book ruthless Elim- elimination of hurry by I John it. Comer you did you want to pull it out yeah. but like your daily rhythms are it's to it's highlighter orange it's orange <laughs> it's great because it, it it's the easiest book to find in your library yeah right it, it's great because it reminds you like you must actively try to eliminate the anxious grind yeah and that's a restful soul. So I, I want to have a soul that's like just in a permanent state of peace and of rest mm-hmm. that, that God is holding all things together. And so if I don't have my morning time with the Lord or, or make sure that that's a regular time, I just start to get tightly wound, frustrated, snappy, yeah. you know, all that. So what about for you daily daily rhythms? So a little, a little comment on that. Um, I wrote this down from Philippians 1. 9 through 10, and it says this, And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent. I feel like, you know, you might ask that question, like, you know, why do most pastors or, you know, Christians, like, why do they say you have to have your quiet time in the morning? Hmm. And while I'll say... I don't care when you do it. If you do it every day, like you're doing it, you're in the word every day. It doesn't matter what time it is. But like with this verse, and I know it's true in my life, when I think of ask like that book, what's best next is literally a prayer. Hmm. And that's, you know, Paul's prayer for this church is like, I want you to grow. I want you to be in the word. I want you to be um, living by the spirit so that you know what to do next. Right. Like, so that you know... Yeah, the right stuff to do. So that you actually realize you're hurrying. Yeah. So you actually realize, you know, I need to do this and not this. Or, you know, and it's hard because it's a practice. Like, we'll never perfect it. Right. Let's start from that. And I think that's why I read 4,000 Weeks in January, and the whole premise is you're... (laughs) 4,000 Weeks is 80 years. And start with the fact that you are a finite being, and you cannot get it all done. Right. And that should make you rest and know, like, and, you know, we read all these secular books with a biblical worldview, right. with a gospel-centered vision. Yeah. I that, do think there was a couple times in the book where I'm like, he's so close to understanding know, it. So Some close. Some of my favorite leadership books, I'm like, man, yeah, you know, you're, you're so just close. you're just literally listing Jesus's qualities. Right. But that's just, that's a, that's a testament to the common grace of God that Absolutely. he's given, yeah. has given real wisdom to people. And, but there's a special wisdom for those who have the yeah. spirit. And Christians them. and non-Christians, like, we're all made in the image right. of God. So we have that. We have this right. deep down desire, um, but yeah, asking that question so that we may approve what is excellent. Yeah. Like God has called us to excellence, not like get stuff done so that you look productive. But right. it's like, are you are we moving the kingdom of God forward? Are we doing what is actually <laughs> excellent? Not just good. Like, right. was that excellent? Right. And I, our friend Micah, he talked to me one time. We were talking about this specifically of do you read your Bible in the morning? He said, well you know, we're all musicians. He's like, when do you tune a guitar? Do you tune your guitar after you've sang and done all your work? Or do you tune the guitar before you do it? And I was like, man, that's a good analogy. That's really good. So it stuck with me, um, stuck with me, you know, till this day, that was like five years ago that he said that. How did I not hear this? It was, that's great. It was after the band. Okay. It was, was, he he was speaking at a retreat for me. That's Um, really good. And it was just so good. Do you tune the guitar 
first. And it's like, yeah, man, if I, if I want to know what to get done and if I want to have that, you know, ruthless el- elimination of hurry rest, I got to, yeah. I got to start my day with that. And so it's not, it's, a, that's the ideal, right? Yes. It's not that's, every day. And that's what I do going back to that. Like I, my daily rest is I, you know, I try to get up early right now in this summer season where things are a little quieter and I'm about to have a new baby. Like I'm trying to like put sleep in the bank right yeah, now. It's going to change. So, but still Seasonally. like the two things I really like try to do every day is, you know, be in my Bible and pray and exercise. Yeah. Um, but right now, like, you know, I tell myself if I feel everything else, I need to be my Bible reading plan mm-hmm. and my prayer time needs to happen. Yeah. Whenever that happens in the day. Yeah. But I kind of tell myself, I can't, you're not allowed to work out. You're not until. allowed to read until you do that because yeah. it is a priority. And so I try to do it in the morning. Um, and so I'll make a cup of coffee, go sit. I have this like room in my, uh, like office in my garage, which when we got our house, I was like, this is it's the, the best, best thing oh, ever. That's so cool. It's air conditioned. And I everything. want one so bad. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, so I've started doing that. Like I have a, a prayer list. I have a Bible reading plan that I just follow the, you know, a Bible in a year plan on uh, the Bible app, which I don't like having my phone. Like I like leaving mm. it out. So sometimes I'll print that out and I just have a check mark. Um, but yeah, I'll read. It's usually like four chapters, which sounds like a lot. But it takes you like not, 20 minutes, yeah. like maybe. Um, that prayer time. And then I've started like just this week, like off of vacation, like memorizing scripture. Mm. And that has been yeah, it's awesome. the most restful, amazing thing I've done. So yeah. I've learned um, 1 Peter 1. And it's shocking how often it comes up in life. After you've memorized it, like, oh my gosh, like this applies to so yeah, much. I want to do that. Like, I want to know if there's like five chapters that of the Bible that you had you like you couldn't have the rest of the Bible. You could just have five chapters. Yeah. Like I want to memorize those. Got to get and Romans First 8. Peter one. Yeah, I want to do Colossians one, mm. Romans eight, and then maybe a book or a chapter in Hebrews. Like just a couple. You could do the book of Jude and have an entire chapter or an entire book. I used Bible to do memorized. Bible quizzing in middle school, and I was really I had the entire <laughs> book of First Thessalonians memorized. Uh-huh. It's gone, okay. and it was in King James. So Eesh. no one wants to hear me quote that out loud. Yeah. Um, but yeah, those are the things that right now. Like that's priority. And then, uh, because that is, man, think about how, like how hard life is, how hard marriage is, how hard parenting is, how hard, you know, being an employee is when you're in your Bible. Yeah. So like, who Imagine are we to it, think? Yeah. Right. yeah like, like how, how much harder if it's, if you're exhausted spiritually and yeah physically exhausted how prideful are we to think that we can go a day without sitting for 30 minutes in the presence of god right like it should break our heart it does and it's and it's prideful it's usually when like i'm like i don't yeah i got my stuff together got it i love god i'll do it later yeah right yeah and it's kind of that that is the thing that's excellent and because it's the living active word of god like that is how god transforms us that's how we see how majestic god is and how glorious he is And it reminds us over and over that the Bible is not about me. Right. And he's God. I'm not. I can rest in that. It's about God redeeming us through his son. Right. And I'm I'm a recipient of that grace, but I need to live it out. Right. I mean, how can we do that? Especially us. Like, we get paid to minister. Yeah. So what's your one takeaway from today's conversation? Everybody's got to be in your Bible every day. (laughs) Hmm. Whatever that looks like. And I really think um, it's hard, but taking that that inventory of your week or your day, it, I mean, it sounds like a task. It's hard for me to do, but it's worth it. And it, it cause it's, you, you, you know, you celebrate and you do what you celebrate and you can weed out those things that are just like, there's, there's whatever. You yeah. don't need to do it. They're not bad, but they're not great. Right. So try to do those things right. that are great because that is restful. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, the, the takeaway, the takeaway for me, I'm not the most practical person. I like the heady stuff. So for me, the takeaway is um, get comfortable with God being God and me not being God. Yeah. And I don't have to make the world run. I don't have to make everything happen. And if anything, when I'm in a state of hurry and and anxiety and I'm kind of like rushing everything, 
it's not only not restful, it's actively draining to myself mm-hmm. and those around me. It's not, it's not just affecting me. Like I know for a fact when I'm, when I'm in that like really tight, tightly wound state and I'm, I know there's stuff I got to do. I got to get out of the house, house fast and I got to yeah. do all that stuff. It is draining my children. It's draining my wife and I'm supposed to disciple them and teach them to rest. Yeah. And yet I keep, I keep screwing that up. And so, and you're actively like you are not ready for the great commission. Right. Yeah. When you walk out of yeah, your discipleship door. is a slow process that you must yeah. be patient with. If you're a hurried person and you're rushing through discipleship through anything, Mm-hmm. It's just not the way God designed yeah. life to be. And you'll miss those conversations with your neighbor that are not planned. Right. You know, those things. Yeah, those like divine interventions that you're yep. trying to rush through because you're like, I got to go do my own yeah. stuff. So cool. Thanks for the conversation. Uh, the two books we talked about today, Ruthless Elimination of Hurry and What's Best Next, uh, we will link those, an Amazon link to those in the description. Yeah. Uh, like this video because that's always very helpful. We love you guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Peace.